spot where Anna Gatewood first started her trek and we have here a few of the items that Emma would have taken with her. Um, we have a blanket to represent the army blanket that she used to cover up in the dark times of the night and when it was raining so she'd have some, somewhat of something soft to lay on. And then Emma brought also with her a rain jacket that's for in the rain or something just to cover up with if it was cold and snowing during the different months. And then a shower curtain that she would um, use to just lay on the ground um, so that she wouldn't get her clothes dirty since she had very few clothes. And with, uh, with these, she took less than $200. And she, brought, she had one walking stick. She had a pair of kids. She had a homemade denim bag with um, Vienna sausages in it. She had a couple cans of Vienna sausages and some raisins. And that was pretty much all that she had um, to take with her on her journey. And no training took place when, before she set out on her trek of the Appalachian Trail. And where are you now and what's, going, what's happening? Now in rain, which Emma would have experienced many times during her trip because she had no prediction of the weather and that's why she often had as much stuff as she did so that she would prepare herself for what was to come forward during her walk. And we are at the exact start of where Emma started. There is on um, the top of Mount Oglethorpe. Yeah, on the top of Mount Oglethorpe. In Jasper, Georgia. <laughs> I love it. into marriage I just found out I was pregnant first time he beat me and uh, I don't know how many times he broke my jaw and teeth loose I, I've got broken ribs over the, through the years and I, you never knew when he's going to flare up you you just he seemed like he's an all right fella and folks kind of respected him but but then just like that he'd snap and and I knew where to where to hide we work out in the farm. I'd work all day with the men folk out in the farm and bring them in and feed them. And before I knew it, he is angry about something and I knew I better hide. It was when my teenage son pulled him off of me one night, he was beating me so hard. And I said, I'm done here. This is, this is crazy. I, I, I got to leave this man. I called the law on him and the sheriff came up and. And the sheriff locked me in the jail that night because they said I must have been aggravating him. So, I, this isn't a piece of my story I tell too many folks, but you maybe can see why I felt safe out there in the woods. <laughs> you know, there weren't nobody gonna hurt me. And, and just sorting through my own mind, it brought me a peace, it, it brought me a, a tranquility that that I'd never felt before, and, and and so that that's just a part of my story. I thought I'd share with you. But um, yeah, I kept on walking. Got to Pennsylvania has a lot of miles to walk in Pennsylvania, <laughs> and that's a long, hard state. And and I'd walk probably oh I don't know ten miles and. I heard this heavy breathing behind me. I thought, my goodness, is a bear coming? And I turned and, and there's a big old friendly fella come up. He said, is you Emma Gatewood? I am. I said, he said, I'm a bird watcher. I want to know what types of birds you done seen on this trail. <laughs> <laughs> so we sat down at the best time talking about birds we done seen on the trail. And he walked back on down and uh, you know, I just fancy people meeting up like that and they'd heard of me, two newspaper articles out. 
and a TV crew had been by, so I guess they was filming me on the evening news. I mean, it's just one thing after another. Well, I finally got to the last state, 14th day of Maine. I'd worn out seven pair of these shoes and lost 24 pounds, and, and there wasn't no fanfare when I hit the main line. There weren't no other folks around, but I walked on across the state line, and, and it was getting dusk, and there's a, just the prettiest bed of moss that was lying right there. And I said, I'm just going to stretch out here. And I laid out, stretched on that soft moss and looked up. And it's almost like you could touch the stars in the sky and the moon was so bright. And I just laid back there and thought about all the wonders that I'd seen over the past weeks. And, and I could kind of picture, you know, the kids sitting around their, their, their table cutting out articles about old granny and watching the evening news with me a traipsing across the bottom of the television screen. And, and, and I somehow felt like I was maybe just carrying the hopes and the dreams of, of all our country's folks, you know? And, and I, 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 I'm glad there were some folks that knew where I was because they came on around the next few days. Maine's the hardest of the whole hike pure rock that you're walking over and I fell again and broke my glasses and and I had bummed up one leg but they helped me up all the way to Mount Katahdin I couldn't have made it without them and and I got got finished and I sang America the Beautiful because <laughs> I really felt like it was just a beautiful place to be and I, I just treasured it so in my heart and, and I didn't realize how famous it was because Groucho Marx even had me on his show. <laughs> <laughs> he did, he did. Did you see that episode of Groucho Marx? No, oh, you're not that old, honey. You're not that old. But, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I spent $200. Uh, and uh, Dave Carraway had me on a, a talk show, and I spent some kind of a wheel, queen for the day or something, and won back the 200 <laughs> So I wore out no money. And, uh, and I, I really, I had such a good time that about a year later, I decided to do it again. <laughs> Might as well. And then I did uh, the hike one more time, just in sections. Uh, but, but I just, just kept walking. And, and, and so, yes, yes, keep walking too. And, 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 and you've got goals out there to, to conquer. You just, I just encourage you to keep, keep on walking, lift your feet high. Bless you.